Welcome to Everyone's a Millionaire podcast, where we explore the world of wealth and finance and provide insights and inspiration to help you achieve your financial goals. Do you ever dream of becoming a millionaire but don't know where to start? Or perhaps you're already on your way to accumulating significant wealth but want to learn more about the strategies and habits of other successful millionaires. In this podcast, we'll bring you interviews with successful entrepreneurs, investors, and financial experts, as well as research-based insights and practical tips to help you build and grow your wealth. We'll cover topics such as how to invest in stocks, real estate, and other assets, how to manage debt and save for retirement, and how to build a mindset for financial success. Whether you're just starting out on your financial journey or you're a seasoned investor already looking for new insights and ideas, Everyone's a Millionaire is the podcast for you. So sit back, relax, and join us as we explore the fascinating world of wealth and finance. All right, guys, welcome back to another episode of Everyone is a Millionaire. I got a great guest on here today. He is in uh, one of my mastermind groups. His name is Kyle Stanley. Kyle lives in California, and he crushes it in business. Kyle, welcome to the show. Thanks, David. Excited to be on, man. Hell yeah, man. I'm excited to have you, Kyle. It's good to connect with you too, man. Always, always fun. Kyle, I know a little bit about you, of course, just from being in the mastermind and getting to connect with you several times, but... The audience needs to know who Mr. Kyle Stanley is. Kyle, give us a quick uh, quick bio, if you don't mind. Yeah, for sure. Um, so Airbnb is my main thing. Um, we did uh, 2.6 in revenue last year, um, and I've been doing it for about four years now. Um, got into it right after I was starting in flipping homes, and my second flip, I said, hey, let me keep this as a long-term rental. And then I was like, wait a second, let me see if it works as a short-term rental. Cause I think I might be able to accelerate some of that cash flow. And it turns out it worked. So, um, before that was a business owner, but honestly never took a business class in college. Um, just really found out after I got into the working world, uh, that I didn't like taking orders from other people or being told when to show up to work. So we call that an entrepreneur. And so, uh, been an entrepreneur since 2011. Man, I love it. Very, very cool. So what avenue would you say that you've used to, you know, to create a net worth of a million plus? Is it real estate? Yeah, real estate specifically, Airbnb. Um, so short term rentals. Um, sorry if you can hear my dog barking. Um, but he, no we love um, <laughs> there you go. Uh, yeah, Airbnb specifically, uh, short term rentals has been the main thing. Um, and specifically with other people's properties as well. We own nine, but we manage all together 55 properties. Are you doing any arbitrage or is it just the nine and then the management? Yeah. So um, I would say right now we have about 10 arbitrages of those 55. Yep. So that comes out to about 35-ish we're managing for other people. Got it. Okay. And and, and they can, you can still have success arbitraging, right? Yeah. You know, just like anything right now, I think no matter what you're looking at in real estate, right? It's the, the margins most places are just a little bit tighter. Um, so I'm just having to be really specific with the types of properties that I'm doing. So for example, two years ago when I could have looked on Zillow and said, hey, I got 50 potential deals here. Now it's really like two or three. But if you can get good enough at your craft and convince these landlords to rent to you, then two or three deals today still makes me, and, and especially the types of deals we're looking for, honestly makes me more any deals two or three years ago. So we're just getting laser focused with what actually is a deal to us now. Dude, I love it. Well, Kyle, thank you for coming on the show, man. I know everyone's yeah. going to be uh, excited to hear some of these nuggets from you, man. So let's get, let's rock and roll. Let's, we got five questions for you today. Super simple. Cool. Episodes are short. Um, this podcast, by the way, is, you know, hosted by millionaires and it's really for those who aren't. So, you know, one in 17 folks here in the United States of America have a net worth of a million or more, one in 17. So this is really for the other 16 people. It's for the other 95%, roughly 5% of people are millionaires here. So um, all of the information, you know, that we're going to, that we're going to talk about here is going to be uh, valuable. I can guarantee it. So awesome. Let's jump in, brother. Number one, 
We're going to start off hearing about your biggest financial mistake or setback. Love to hear about that. And then part two of that question is how did you recover from it? Um, man, biggest financial setback. Um, I, it was before I ever got into real estate. Um, and it was twofold. One, um, I dove all in into a business that I built. Um, and I spent 25 K to, to start the business and then another 25 K to eventually, uh, make a product within the business. That was a digital product that I thought was going to take off. Um, and that 50 K, um, just so you guys can understand, I was working about 80 hours a week on a normal week. I was doing this in Phoenix, Arizona and my best year, David, I made $42,000. Like it was, and I did this for six years. Um, that was your so, best year. Was that? That was your best year. That was my best year. Yeah. Holy cow, man. Yeah. I have to say you are one persistent SOB, man. And, <laughs> and, and that usually when you say persistence is a good thing, in this case, it was just stubbornness, right? Like yeah. I didn't want the people, I was a sports anchor before I owned a business. And so, yeah, every, no yeah and so everyone thought I was going to be like the next ESPN guy. And then when I quit, everyone was like, why are you quitting? You're really good at this. Like a lot of people were disappointed that I quit. And so it was like my gut feeling that I had to make this business work or else everyone was going to tell me, I told you so. Um, and so my stubbornness kept me in that. And honestly, um, the writing was on the wall after year two of that business, but I stayed in for another four years because I just didn't want to fail. Yeah. But what I learned from that was that just because you change lanes doesn't mean you failed. It just means that totally. you've decided that this is no longer the vehicle that's going to get me to success. Yep. And so um, once I was okay with that, that's really how I was able to recover because it was my, my dad um, went into... Uh, hospice in 2018. And that's when I was like, okay, like, am I going to just be spinning my wheels for the rest of my life? How am I going to be able to provide for my future kids, my future wife, my future family? And the answer was, I, I don't know. So that's when I said, okay, I got to get into something that's a little bit more worth my time. And that's where I found real estate. Man, I love it. And so the recovery phase of that was just pivoting basically, right? Yeah, it really was. Nice. Okay. Yeah. Awesome, man. Very cool. All right, number two, can you share some sp some specific strategies or tactics that you are using or have used recently to not only increase your income, but also your net worth? Yeah, relationships. Um, I mean, the answer. They, to me, like when I got into real estate and especially like the mastermind that you and I are in, like I get into these rooms because to me, that's my bulletproof shield. Like that's that's what's going to pick me up when I'm down, mm -hmm. um, financially and family and in anything, right. Whoever you surround yourself with is, is how you're going to be able to get through those things. So like, I, th I think, and you probably relate to this too. Like a lot of the things that we do are just so we don't end up back where we used to be. Right. Yeah. Like <laughs> just, just thinking yeah. like, okay, I remember in 2016 when I was in debt for the first time in my life, I never want to be back there again. And yeah, all the strategies that I'm using with Airbnb, especially the the low overhead, low risk way that I do it, um, that's one way. But then, you know, things happen. And in the last year, a lot of stuff has happened in the real estate world. A lot of my friends that are wholesalers have lost their businesses. A lot of people that were buying long-term rentals and short-term rentals without any sort of issues on getting double-digit returns are now no longer seeing that. And so... Um, for me, like interest just, rates, competition, yeah. other other market, you know, totally get it, man. Yeah, and so when when I get into the, you know, like a uh, really good friend of mine that we met in the mastermind, uh, Matt Halverson, I talk to him all the time, and I'm just like, you know, what are you doing, and how are you pivoting, and and it's those kinds of relationships that it's just like, okay, that keeps me uh, head and shoulders above the rest of the competition who's just sitting at home trying to figure things out on their own. Um, so that's Dude, I love my... that. I love that answer. No one's given me that answer yet, you mm -hmm. know, and obviously not everyone's answers are always going to be the same. Of course, that wouldn't make for a very fun podcast, right? <laughs> <laughs> but, um, yeah, I love that relationships. And that's definitely one of my strategies too, is, you know, being in the right room, surrounding yourself by the right people, 
you know, and having the right mentors, right? So yeah. the next question kind of leads into, it, it kind of piggybacks off of, off of your answer, right? So number three here is, you know, do you have mentors and role models? And if so, how have they influenced you? I'm not asking who these people are. I'm asking how they've, you know, influenced you or helped you. Yeah, I, I believe in mentors in different parts of your life. Sometimes those mentors can be the same person for different parts of your life. But like I have a a relationship mentor, I have a faith mentor, I have a uh, real estate, multiple real estate mentors, I would say. So yes, you have mentors. Eric yeah, I, doesn't have any mentors. How crazy is that? <laughs> you say Eric Hatch doesn't? He's the only guy that has answered the question, no, but I love it. And I'm not picking on Eric. I love that guy. He's amazing. Well, but I was like totally blown away when he was like, no, I don't have any mentors. I learned it all on my own. I'm like, holy cow, bro. Well, I think it depends on how you define that too. Like I'm not talking about a mentor that I go and I pay thousands of dollars and tell them to teach me. It's yeah, more books like- Books can be mentors. Podcasts yeah. can be mentors, right? Yeah, totally. And I'm sure he's obviously read books and he learned things along the way, but you know, I think his definition was people that he paid to coach him, you know? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, you know, like one guy, for example- um, his name's Josh. He's my uh, faith and relationships mentor. Um, you know, I don't pay him anything. He's just a really good friend that I know if I'm having issues with either one of those, I can pick up the phone and I'm going to get really good advice from him. And right. um, so I, I bet you if Eric really thought about it the same way that I do, he would probably admit that maybe there is someone in his life that is a quote unquote mentor. <laughs> Agreed. I love Eric. We're not picking on you, brother, if you listen <laughs> to this episode. <laughs> but I love that answer, though. So back to your to your answer though, man. How have your mentors helped you? Like specifically? Um, I'd imagine it's probably a lot of mindset. I mean, that's typically what yeah. they've helped me do over the years. I think also it's also, you know, mentors are great to guide you, but from my experience, Kyle, they're really also very, very, very valuable to keep you from doing dumb stuff. Yeah. I, I think the word that comes to mind for me is clarity. Clarity. Uh, yes. Like, I always have an idea of my next step, but if I don't have confidence in doing what I think I'm about to do, that's where a mentor comes in and gives me either like, yes, I would do that or yeah, you're on the right track, but maybe pivot a little bit. Right. Um, and so it's just always like for me, Ben, that, th and, and the same thing when I mentor people for, for their Airbnb businesses too, it's like, don't you want to make decisions that you know are right and not ones that you have to just cross your fingers and hope that this works? I love the way um, you word that. Yep. Yeah. And so I, I think that's the biggest thing is they've given me clarity. Love it. I love it. All right. Two to go, brother. We're almost done. Yes. Number four, how do you balance risk and reward a risk versus reward when making investment decisions? Um, kind of a hard question, really. It's probably the hardest question. No, it's a good question though. And uh, the way that I balance that is it has to have multiple exit strategies. Um, so if I can't short-term rental this or if short-term rentals become you know, something that in the future is banned in my city, can I now rent this as a long-term deal? That's why I'll never buy a property that's a million-dollar property because that those million-dollar properties- They're going to be so rent. hard to long-term rent. Exactly. exactly. No problem, but- Exactly. Yep. Um, so multiple exit strategies, lease option, uh, owner finance, flipping it. And that's also where like I don't really like buying turnkey because you're not- adding any value to it. So I want to buy something that I can at least add some equity to. Um, yeah, I, I would say to keep it simple, just multiple exit strategies. It's a great answer, man. I've gotten that a couple of times and also just never paying retail, right? Always buying at a discount. And you said that in, in, in so many words, right? You said, got to have some value add. I'm not trying to buy these turnkeys because there's no added value. Right. So man, I hope the listeners are seeing some of these parallels and similarities um, now that, you know, we've got 10 episodes recorded here, right? So I love it. Amazing. All right. One to go, Kyle. We're almost done, brother. Cool. Number five. This is my favorite question, by the way. And it's very simple and it may take a minute. It may not to come up with an answer, uh, but it's the best one. It's the best question. So the question is, looking back, what advice would you give your younger self to get where you are? quicker 
right? So if you could talk to yourself from what, four years ago when you started in real estate, yeah, what would you say to yourself now today? Or, you know, going back, you know, if you could go back in time, of course, right? What would you tell yourself? Uh, I would tell myself two things. Um, one, learn what passive income is and how to create those flows. Um, I think it's a crime that I didn't learn the word passive income, the phrase passive income until I was 26 years old. Mm. Um, and yes, I'm college educated and had a 4.1 GPA in high school and the word passive income never once, right? Um, so I would give myself that advice. And then one of my favorite quotes, uh, if you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go far, go together. Ooh, and love that quote. Yeah. And to me, there's no way that you're going to get to your goals if you're the only one that is working towards those goals. Um, you know, my Airbnb business, we have 20 people employed um, or 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 have jobs with us. Yeah, they're on the place. payroll some way, shape or form. Yeah. And that allows me to be able to put only three to five hours of work a week in this business. And it still grows because we have all of these people in the business doing the things to not only maintain, but also to grow. Um, that's allowed me to go and create other businesses, to create an education business, to create uh, a, a creative financing business with another partner, to go and buy, we just bought a storage deal for 138 units. Like there's so many different routes I can take now because I said, hey, I, I want to learn how to create multiple streams of passive income. And I know that the only way to make it passive is going to be from me bringing on people. Sure, you know, I, I might make instead of 100 cents on every dollar, I might only make 50 cents on every dollar. But that'll I can tell you right now, David, there's no way we have 55 properties if it was just me. Dude, hundred percent. Yeah. Colin was on the show, and he said uh, it was either I think it was Colin, uh, Colin Schwartz, and he said uh, I would much rather have a slice of a watermelon than a whole grape. <laughs> yeah, and it just puts it into perspective, right? Love it. Like, Holy cow! I would much rather have a tiny sliver of a watermelon. Think yeah. about how big that is, right? Even a tiny sliver is still ten times larger than the entire grape, and I, I can't it. agree more. Kyle, that is amazing. You crush these tons of value. Um, I guess there's one more question, man. In the event somebody wants to learn how to crush it in the Airbnb business, where where, where should we send them? Is yeah, there an email? Uh, Is there a, a, a social media handle? Is Do you have a website? Like, Where do we send these folks? Yeah, let, send them to my website, fearlesskyle.com. Okay. Um, and on that site, it'll show you where my YouTube channel is. It'll show you my podcast. Um, if you want to connect directly with me, you can just follow me on Instagram at Fearless Kyle. So fearlesskyle.com and at Fearless Kyle. Amazing. Kyle, thank you so much for your time. It's always great to get to connect with you. And I know you are helping so many people. Not only that, but you're crushing it in your own business. You got yourself a new baby. I follow you online. I see it. Super cute family, man. It's just awesome to know you. I'm honored. I'm grateful. And I just want to say thank you on behalf of myself and the audience for coming here today, giving us all this value. And uh, yeah, man, really appreciate you. Right back at you, David. Thanks, man. Thank you. Sign it off, guys. And that's a wrap for today's episode of Everyone's a Millionaire. We hope you've enjoyed our discussion and that you've gained some valuable insights and ideas to help you build and grow your own wealth. We want to thank our guests for sharing their knowledge and expertise with us today. And we also want to thank you, our listeners, for tuning in and joining us on this journey of financial discovery. If you've enjoyed today's episode, be sure to subscribe to our podcast, leave us a rating and a review on your favorite podcast platform. And if you have any questions or feedback, please feel free to reach out to us on our website or on social media. Remember, at Everyone's a Millionaire, we believe that wealth is within reach for everyone. And we're here to help you achieve your financial goals. So until next time, keep hustling, keep learning, and keep building your wealth. Signing off.